This is Tuesday Talks at 10.30. I'm evidential medium Stacey Niedenthal, where I come to you every Tuesday at 10.30, and we talk about things like mediumship, grief, death and dying, meditation, um, coming back home, all those things that maybe you're not always comfortable in speaking to others with. But let me know that you're here. Say good morning. I know I'm a few minutes late, but um, not too bad. Not too bad. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So every Tuesday at 1030, I come to you and we talk about different things. Um, I'm Evidential Medium Stacy Niedenthal. I am a child of God, Evidential Medium Spiritual Healer. And I have the ability to channel spirit using love and light for my higher good and the higher good of those that God puts in my path. I am not the medium that says, I see death all around you and you're going to be dead in 10 days. My gift, my prayer is that God, spirit, angels bring in the most loving message to help your spirit heal. Most people will come to me or either at a crossroads looking for direction or they want to connect with someone on the other side. So today is our... Tuesday Talks at 10.30, where we just sit and we chat for a little while. We talk about things that, um, you know, kind of pop into my head that I feel like we need to talk about. And it is June. It is June already. Can you believe this? June. Like, where has half of the year gone? We are at the halfway point of 2024. We are in the sixth month of 12 months. In numerology... Six um, means, and well, the number six is considered to be the mother of all numbers. It brings a connection between family and importance, um, important relationships. It carries caring and trust and empathy and sympathetic emotions. It brings about gentleness and romance. And when we look at numerology number six, I'm still learning about numerology, so it always like intrigues me to see what these numbers mean. Um, I think it's amazing once we start talking about the month of June that the number six is considered the mother of all numbers, right? So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of the symbolism for the month of June, some of the things that surround June. So when I looked at the month of June, and I know I've said June an awful lot, but when I look at that, June is named after Juno. And Juno is the ancient Roman goddess in the Greek mythology, and she was considered the goddess of love, marriage, and wisdom. And when you think about the month of June, love, marriage, wisdom, things are blossoming, things are being created right now. And I wanted to look at who Juno was connected to. You know, it's kind of like the ancestry, so to speak. So Juno was the daughter of Saturn, and Saturn is the god of time, generation, abundance, and dissolution. And also, the daughter of Oops. And it's O-O-P-S, so I don't know if it's Oops, Ops, um, but this goddess was the Earth goddess. So I thought it was interesting that you've got her parents basically being time, generation, abundance, disillusion, and then you've got the earth goddess. So you have time and you have earth. Now Juno was the wife of Jupiter, and Jupiter is the god of the sky, the thunder, considered to be the um, god of all the gods, the king of all the gods, of all of the, you know, um, the spiritual realm, the metaphysical realm. So now you've got time, generation, abundance, earth, and sky, and thunder, which would be light and water and things like this. So Juno and Jupiter created, okay, so they're kids. So Juno was the mother of Mars, which is the god of war and agriculture. And I thought it odd that that war and agriculture went together but then I started thinking about it and when you think about toiling the earth digging up the earth planting things putting seeds into the ground taking care of them so that they can break up through the ground agriculture is kind of a war on the earth 
It's that rebirth of things. They also had Vulcan, god of fire. So now we're getting another element in here. Time, um, fire, earth, sky, thunder, all of these things combined for the month of June. Then Bellino, B-E-L-L-A-N-O, was the goddess of war. And then Lucina was the goddess of childbirth. So you've got the goddess of war and the goddess of childbirth. And I know everybody always says, uh, you know, when, when you get into a, uh, a disagreement, let's say, with a man, you say, well, yeah, I give birth. You've never been through labor. But isn't labor, isn't childbirth kind of that war within the feminine? It's bringing forth a seed that was planted within you and giving it life, bringing it out, right? So when you think about your family, when you think about your children, when you think about your spouse, wouldn't you fight for them? Wouldn't you want the bounty for your children to be better than the bounty that you had for yourself? So when I'm looking at Juno, she represents so many different aspects within our universe. You know, time. We always say we don't have enough time. You know, children grow up so fast. I remember my parents saying to me, don't rush it because time's going to fly. And when I was a kid, I never believed that. But now that I'm an adult, I'm like, oh my gosh. You know, it is the sixth month of 2024 already. Like, where did time go? Juno also had a sacred animal. So this would be like her spirit animal. And it was the peacock. And I thought that that was interesting as well because e uh, the peacock represents pride and um, confidence and moving forward and things like this. When you look at it on the spiritual realm, it's immortality, resurrection eternal life. That's the Christian aspect of the peacock. It also represents beauty, rebirth, wealth, good luck, power, strength, confidence, timelessness, wisdom, self-discovery, empowerment, and peace. So when you look at everything that has the Juno has been um, germinated with, I guess is a good way to say it, doesn't the peacock feather represent all of that? Um, beauty, good luck, abundance, self-discovery. And in the metaphysical, in the spiritual world, that um, like teardrop that's on the peacock feather represents the third eye. Opening, seeing, knowing, just knowing, having the knowing. So the, thir the, the peacock feather represents awakening. The earth is awakening. Your spirit is awakening. Things are awakening within you. And it takes time for those things to awaken. And this is considered rebirth. And sometimes we feel like we're in a battle with ourselves during this. You know, it's that um, germination. It's that abundance. It's dissolution. It's, it's finding resolution for the things that kind of make us gunky inside. So when you look at June, I mean, this is my, one of my favorite months. June, July, and August. The hotter it is, the better it is. So, you know, you have your agriculturist saying, you know, you make hay when the sun shines. Well, the sun's shining. The things are growing, planting. That bounty comes out. June brings warmth, sunlight, the new harvest, joy, and renewal. June also has symbolic flowers and stones and zodiacs. So the flowers, when I was looking at the... the symbolic flowers. The very first one was oak, and I never really thought of oak as a flower. It's a tree, right? But oak symbolizes life, strength, stability. And you have the honeysuckle, which symbolizes renewal, attraction, dreams, fertility. And then you have the rose, which symbolizes love, um, connection, devotion, loyalty, fertility, and dreams. So when we're looking at everything that June has kind of um, thrown around it or what symbolizes it, you look at the, the summer solstice, right? It's the longest day of the year. This year's summer solstice is June 20th. Um, it is said that the sun, this is the mythology behind it, the sun spirals around the longest day of the year in the longest dance. 
And it is said that the sun is saying, I bless you with bounty, fertility, true destiny, to bring the ability to live your best loving intent. So the sun is blessing us with this. This is a dance that the sun is doing, bringing us um, the ability to live in your most loving intent. So when I look at June, it's surrounded by love, connections, um, fertility. It's connected with abundance and strength and the family getting tighter together and the growing of, of things. The solstice celebrates the bounty of life, desire, passion, sensuality. Isn't it interesting how the month of June has so much symbolism around it? It is said to be the next step of divine rhythm. It's balance, finding your balance. You know, when, I, when, when we usher in June, it smells different. It feels different. I feel different in June. It's just, there's so many things that I want to do. When I look at like January, February, and March, mm, you know, it's that slow down period where I need to kind of like go into hibernation. But once April, May, and June hit, all of a sudden I've got this burst of energy. I've blossomed into things. There are things that need to be done. <clears throat> so the stones that are associated with June um, is uh, alexandrite. And alexandrite attracts and keeps love into your life. Again, here's that love connection. Um, then we have moonstone, connects with your dreams and your emotions. And the pearl, which is the symbol of purity, oneness within yourself. Um, you've got Gemini and, and Cancer, which are the zodiac signs. Gemini juggles passion. Gemini is the twins. <clears throat> it juggles passion, hobbies, careers, and friends. Um, and that's from May 22nd, sorry, until June 21st. And then we also have Cancer as the zodiac sign. Cancer is from June 22nd to July 22nd. Cancer is said to be the nurturer. Its, it's foundation is loyalty, strength, building a stronger foundation, emotions. So June can be very emotional for you. It can be very loving. It can be very eye-opening for you. And when I was looking into all these symbols, it got me to thinking, no wonder June is one of the most popular months <clears throat> for weddings, connections, bringing together families. It's, 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 all those symbols are around it. Connection, love, balance, bounty. Why wouldn't you want to get married in June? Imagine having a June wedding. I was, more, I was married in October. But imagine being married in June. What are some of the things that you would have at your wedding? All these different symbols to bring in, to put a blessing on your wedding. The peacock feather for eternal togetherness, eternal togetherness. When you take your vows, you are pledging from now until death do us part. I will love and honor you. This is eternal togetherness. It brings beauty and strength, timelessness, peace, self-empowerment. It's to become one. You have to find that balance within yourself. It's finding the beauty within the connection, the partnership that you have within each other. I would have oak leaves all around for strength and stability in this union. You know, marriage isn't always easy. You have to fight to, oh, I don't know, keep that love within there to connect because all of a sudden two individual people who have lived their lives in individual ways, have now come together to form this bond for eternal love and life and to find abundance within themselves, bringing in honeysuckles to keep love and attraction and usher in balance. Just the smell of honeysuckles. When we used to ride our motorcycles at night, I used to just love to go through like developments and you could just smell the honeysuckle and it just... I don't know, it just did something to me. It was one of my favorite parts of riding at night. And then, of course, you know, the universal 
um, flower for our wedding is the roses. And did you know that it was devotion, love, connection, dreams, and fertility that the rose symbolized? You know, numerology, it's the family, it's relationships, it's trust, it's sympathetic emotions. Don't we need to be sympathetic with each other? Find some empathy with each other? Find some love and gentleness? Well, June brings that in. June represents all of that. If June were a symbol, it would be a great big heart with arms wrapped around it. And looking into Juno's family tree, it's, I mean, it just blossoms. The whole month of June is blossoming. And I feel as if they couldn't have picked a better goddess to name this month after. June, Juno, grounding, sunlight, warmth, the smell of honeysuckle. You know, you're outside in your garden. Look at your garden. Are your flowers blooming? Are there different colors in your garden? Are different scents, different um, different ways that the, that the earth feels, that the, that the air feels? It feels like one great big warm hug to me a lot of times. So if the first half of June has not been great for you, or the first half of, of this year has not been great for you, Let's welcome in June. We're midway through 2024. Let's invite in kindness. Let's invite in love. June brings renewal. Time to renew yourself. What's within you that, that you've kind of lost a grip on? You know, yesterday <clears throat> was such a beautiful day and it was one of my days that I had off. And I found myself wanting to purge and clean, I cleaned every carpet in, in the apartment. And it felt good to just like, you know, clean it and, and have that renewal and that new scent and that new smell within the apartment. Now the dogs weren't real wild about it. But I had this burst of energy that comes with the month of June. It's renewal. It's getting rid of the old and bringing in the new. And believe me, I had to empty that water several times. I didn't realize. But anyway, we, you don't want to hear about that. Um, June brings renewal, love, and connection. Invite the peacock feather. Invite that third eye. In, invite that spiritual awakening within yourself. Be open to receiving what God has brought Juno in to represent. What are your intentions? What do you want to... What do you want to accomplish this month? Maybe you want to reconnect with friends and families that you haven't seen in a while. Maybe you're going on vacation, family vacation. School's getting out, so you can all get together and go on a family vacation. Camping trip, family, connection, abundance, renewal, bringing things back together. And I realize how important numbers are. Now, numerology is something that I'm interested in, that I'm learning about. I don't completely get the whole thing with numbers, but I, you know, I've realized for a very long time in God's word, numbers are very important. You know, on the seventh day, he rested. Seven. Seven comes up quite a bit. Six is love, right? So it's allowing God to mentor you, basically into this season of love. It's allowing yourself to invite love in, but also share love with others, reconnecting, finding strength within yourself, renewing yourself, finding abundance. Let me see what all this, I, I was talking about here. Um, beauty, rebirth, wealth, good luck, power, confidence, wisdom, wisdom. Maybe you want to learn something this month. But it's it's that inviting the warmth of the sunlight, that big warm hug around you, breathing in the scent of the flowers. You know, we've all made mistakes along the way. Every single one of us has mistakes. Things that we're not proud of, you know, those skeletons in the closet, so to say. But it's learning that you're not stuck with that skeleton because you've learned there's a whole new renewal within yourself we were not how do I want to say this we did not expect
some of the things that have crossed our lives. We did not, we were not prepared for a lot of the things that we've saw, seen, some of the things that we've done, the people that we've lost. But we've still walked through it and we've learned, we've grown, we've blossomed, we've bloomed. There's a saying, and you hear me say this quite a lot, that if you feel like you're in a dark place, think about the seed in the earth. You're planted. You're looking for that light. You're being nurtured to break through that soil to blossom and bloom. So you're not stuck in the dark. You're planted and you're growing. So is it time for you to blossom? Is it time for you to show love to other people? 2024 is halfway done. What have you accomplished? What do you want to accomplish in 2024? There's a lot of hard things that we walk through, but there's also a lot of love and goodness in the people that are around us. You know, breathing in that sense of the flowers, buying flowers for someone, smiling at people just because, but offering your love, offering a hand up. I have a lot of friends who deal with, and one of my friends that I'm talking about is actually one, but I'm not gonna mention her name who fight for those who can't always fight for themselves. And she's tough on a lot of people, but she also helps them grow within themselves, find what's good within themselves, to have that seed planted and grow. We've been taught for so long, you know, that we're in that garden where people just stamp, stomp all over us and, and, and our flowers are wilted and we're just, I don't know, sometimes we just feel defeated. But fight for yourself. Find that renewal. Find someone to help you find that renewal and that love and that balance within you. You know, allow the sun to dance the blessing around you. And I love that it was saying about the summer solstice is the sun taking time to swirl around and dance on the longest day of the year offering you a blessing and I had it all in my head of connection family relationships allowing you to open up to what you intend your life to be but your life cannot intend to be anything if you don't love yourself if you don't love others if you don't constantly nurture yourself and get out in the sunlight. Get grounded. Get in alignment. Feel the warmth of the sun. It's June, baby. Why do you think people get married in June? Now I know. It's surrounded in growth, in love, in balance, and strength, and confidence. This is your month to grow. Do you feel it? Do you see it? I'm trying to look for comments here. I see it. I see a few, but not many, and that's okay. This is me just yammering on, offering my love to you, to plant that seed within you, to say blossom and grow in love and abundance. That good luck is coming for you, but you have to invite it in. Be willing to invite that in, to know that you deserve all these things that everything symbolizes you know we talk about eternal life together eternal eternal so eternal life together a lot of us have lost loved ones happy anniversary we've lost loved ones who have touched our hearts and our lives very deeply and on this physical realm they're not here but on the spiritual realm, they're always with us. It is that eternal love. And it is knowing that one day, your eyes will meet again. But it's the signs and the symbols that they send to you to let you know that you're not alone. Wouldn't you think God created us for a reason, for a purpose? But the greatest commandment of all is love. We talked last Monday about the verse, there's no greater love than a man who, or a person who lays their life down for another. 
love. Surround yourself in love. And I know it's difficult sometimes. I think to myself, mmm, you want me to love this person? But just because I show love to you and offer love to you, doesn't mean I have to constantly be surrounded by you. June is that is the, the month of love, abundance, confidence. Halfway through the year, when are you going to start? Today is a good way day to start. What is it? It is June 4th. 6-4. I should have looked up. 6-4 is 10, so that's a 1. I don't know what numerology 1 means. I'm sorry. I should have looked that up. But if not today, when? Do you ever find yourself saying, when my house is paid off, I will. When I lose 10 pounds, I will. When I retire, I will. Everything is based on whens. Why not now? What are you going to do today? Send a text to a friend of yours that you haven't seen for a while that just says, hey, thinking about you. Give your spouse, your children, a hug for no reason. Send them a text. I love you. Thinking about you. I'm proud of you. It's bringing those connections back to yourself. Are you feeling disconnected? I felt disconnected in February. February was really freaky for me. I felt something big was coming. I thought, um, not really imminent danger, but I felt like there was going to be some type of uh, a, a major tragedy that was going to happen. I don't know if it was the key bridge that fell, because once that happened, all of a sudden, that left me. But when I walk into June, when I leave February and March, I marched out of February, <laughs> right, and into April with the showers and the tears and the renewal, into May with Mother's Day and Memorial Day, and now into June, the month of love and abundance and connection. Who are you going to connect with? How are you going to change the love you feel for yourself and the love that you feel for others? I'm just giving you things to think about. I'm not telling you that you have to go out and do these things. I'm just telling you what the symboliz symbolization is of June to maybe wake some of you up and say, Ooh, I haven't really been gentle on myself. I need to make a wrong a right. I need to not be afraid of my knowing, of my intuition. I need to be more confident. I need to offer up more love. Maybe I need to advocate for those who cannot advocate for themselves. But, do you know, June, with um, timelessness being part of who she is, with connection, love, and balance being part of who she is, with the oak leaf for strength and stability, here I was on the wrong page, you know, the goddess of love and marriage and wisdom. You need wisdom in a marriage. You really, really do. You need that sympathetic ear because you're not always going to agree with each other. Not just in a marriage. In raising your children. In being connected with friends. That empathetic, sympathetic ear. To know that maybe we may not always agree, but I still love you. And I am confident in the relationship that we have. So you've got things that are blossoming. You've got, let's see here, generation, the god of time, abundance, um, the earth goddess, the sky, the thunder, war, agriculture, fire, childbirth. All of these things are embedded in, in Juno, this ancient Greek goddess that June was named after. How much of it do you embody? Welcome in. Hmm? I welcome in timelessness. I welcome in love. I invite in that fiery spirit within me 
to advocate for those who maybe can't advocate for others. I want to have an empathetic and a sympathetic ear for my family and friends and my kids and my grandkids. I want to have a better understanding because when it comes right down to it, you may not like me, but if you know me, you know I am loyal and you know I love you. And I will do anything in my power to show that. Sometimes that means a hard conversation as well. So, pull out your stones, alexandrite, moonstone, and pearl. Put the flowers around you, honeysuckle, rose, sit under an oak tree. Look at what the number six means with it being, you know, considered the mother of the numbers, um, family relationships. It craves, the number six craves emotional energy, gentleness, romance, love. So, June, what are you going to invite? I wrote down, invite love in. Invite in understanding in your path. Invite in the warmth of the sun. Breathe in the scent of the flowers. It is your time to blossom. The sun dances, dancing is the blessing. Welcome in the blessing. Don't hoard your blessing. Share your blessing. So, that's my talk for June. That's the symbols that surround the month of June. What are you going to do this month? What are you going to renew? What are you going to invite in? What are you going to offer out? I pray that each and every one of you are living the life you love and you're loving the life you live. If not, you're the only one that can change it. I hope you have a great and wonderful day. Peace out. I love you. Think about what I said. Invite love. Balance. Renewal. Growth. I'll talk to you next Tuesday at 10.30. Peace out. I love you all very much. Bye-bye.